Ice cream, Eskimo bars, vanilla, creme brulee, chocolate is perhaps the favorite treat of childhood. One of the most popular types of ice cream is the Eskimo bar. Today, in an ice cream factory, we will learn how they make Eskimo bars and the secret behind its success. The company, Russian Frost, was founded in 1999 and quickly dominated a significant share of the ice cream market, winning the devotion of its customers. At its two production facilities, one located in the Moscow Oblast and one in the Altai Krai, it produces more than 200 kinds of the refreshing treat. Annually, about 40,000 tons of ice cream rolls off the conveyor lines and into the stores. Russian Freeze is Russia's only producer of ice cream that exports its products to countries of the European Union as well as to Israel and the United States of America, which bears testimony to the high quality of its ice cream. In Russia, no other plant besides ours is built to American standards. Generally speaking, all of the homogenization and pasteurization operations of the prepared blend is saved to disk. In online mode, the entire preparation process is sent over the Internet to New York State, from where, if something has gone wrong with the process, a command is sent to make an adjustment or to discard a batch. Well, however, this hasn't happened yet in my lifetime. Not once has anything been discarded according to instructions issued from over there. But nevertheless, the control is in place. Ice cream manufacturing is a complex process that requires high-tech equipment. Therefore, it is difficult to make ice cream at home and absolutely impossible to obtain a result identical to that created by a manufacturing facility. The starting point of any quality ice cream is natural ingredients. As a rule, even in different types of ice cream, the base components are the same, differing only in their proportions and of the presence or absence of colorings and additions. An Eskimo bar begins its journey like any other ice cream, in the lab, with a thorough inspection of the raw materials. In order to completely eliminate faulty production, laboratory workers closely monitor every step of the ice cream's production, taking samples and conducting tests. Every two to three hours, multiple portions of the already finished ice cream are sent to the laboratory for study and for tasting. Before the ingredients make it to the preparation area, the monitoring unit determines their physical and chemical characteristics, such as specific gravity and fat content. Each type of raw material passes through its own specific tests. One of the main components of any ice cream is whole milk powder. We reconstitute it and it undergoes an organoleptic test. The taste and smell when having been boiled are tested, as is determining its boiling point. Only after having already analyzed all of the dry milk powder can we consequently come to a conclusion as to whether it is suitable, meeting the Russian government's technical requirements, and that it can be used for the production of ice cream. In the neighboring biochemical laboratory, the future ice cream ingredients are tested for the presence of mold, yeast, E. coli, and other disease-producing bacteria. In case anything is detected, the raw material does not wind up in the production process and ultimately to the consumer in the form of an already completed product. An amazing fact about ice cream is that this cold, frozen product is initially boiled, and in the professional lingo of the ice cream makers, it's called the cooking part of the process that transpires here. Included in this part of the process is the mixing in of all the ingredients, the pasteurization and the homogenation. From this point, the Eskimo bar begins its journey. In the first stage of production, butter is melted down in a melting tank over a period of an hour and a half. In order to produce a ton of ice cream, 130 kilograms of butter is required. Then in the next container, sugar, whole milk powder, stabilizers and emulsifiers are poured into the water that has been preheated to 60 degrees Celsius. They are mixed together and the melted butter flows in from the melting tank. 
the raw materials are mixed together in a mixer at a speed of 1500 revolutions per minute. Then the future ice cream is pumped into the next room where it undergoes filtration, pasteurization and homogenization. The filtration takes place in two stages. First, the primary filters separate out coarse, extraneous matter, usually lumps of material that didn't dissolve. The fine filters have openings down to the size of a millimeter and remove the tiny particles. The mixture is heated to a temperature of plus 88 degrees Celsius and is maintained at that point for 34 seconds. When this happens, all bacteria are killed off, but it doesn't break down the milk proteins and it retains all of its beneficial properties. Then it is cooled down to plus 4 to plus 2 degrees Celsius. It is essential that this milk-based mixture be homogenized. Powerful pumps force the mixture through an ultra-fine opening at a rate of several hundred meters per second. Large fat globules passing through it are drawn out into cylinders which are broken down into small fat droplets. In a well homogenized mixture, the diameter of fat globules must not exceed 1 to 2 micrometers and there also shouldn't be an accumulation of fat. The homogenation process is carried out at temperatures no lower than plus 65 degrees Celsius. This process allows you to make a smoother ice cream, otherwise it wouldn't be of a high enough quality. After homogenization, the prospective ice cream goes into storage tanks in which it spends about four hours and ages by cooling. During this time, the emulsifiers and stabilizers in the mixture become active, causing the ice cream to become thicker, which facilitates the next process, the freezing. They first learned to make ice cream in China in the 13th century. There, milk was frozen in two containers. Milk was poured into one and cold water with ice and salt into another. The salt water remained liquid even at temperatures of minus 4 degrees Celsius. The container with the milk was placed into the container with the salt water and the milk was transformed into a thick cold paste after many hours of chilling and stirring. Then it was sent to an ice house where it was conclusively turned into ice cream. The Chinese kept the recipe for this chilled treat a closely guarded secret. Marco Polo, the Venetian merchant and traveler, managed to learn it. He brought the recipe for ice cream with him when he returned to Italy from China. And since then, this dish has been an enduring presence on the menus of the aristocrats whose chefs were among the first few who were taught. Since those long ago times, the technology of preparing ice cream has improved. The cost of refrigeration has gotten cheaper and ice cream has become affordable to all. The principle of freezing has remained the same from earlier times, but this takes place with the implementation of the latest technologies. By its shape, the freezer is reminiscent of a thermos. Coolant circulates between the two walls, the inner and the outer. The mixture is piped into the central portion of the freezer simultaneously with air at a pressure of six to eight atmospheres. It is fitted with a shaft with blades that turn at a speed of 320 rotations per minute to cut the frozen mixture off the sides. In this way, the future ice cream gets evenly aerated and cools to minus four to six degrees Celsius. The viscosity of the mixture depends upon the temperature at which it was frozen and how well aerated it is. The required parameters are set by the operator through a computer program. A denser mixture is required for the production of an Eskimo bar than it is for an ice cream cone or cup. Without the air, the mixture would look like frozen milk and not like ice cream, and the taste would be completely different. It's precisely because it's impossible to execute the freezing at home that homemade ice cream will never be like that of a factory's. When freezing, milk-based mixtures, 45 to 67 percent of the moisture which is in the ice cream freezes. In the factory Russian Frost, Eskimo bars are produced in two different forms. It is coated in dark chocolate or as I have in milk chocolate. The recipe for these two Eskimo bars is almost identical, but the ice cream for this Eskimo passes through the freezer one time and for that twice. It is surprising that nonetheless they differ in taste subtly due to the different texture of the Eskimo bars. And which is tastier? That's already up to the affectionado. The second time the ice cream passes through a freezer called Deep Blue. In it, 
the ice cream is no longer aerated, but is mixed again and chilled more than in a normal freezer. The mixture ends up to be softer and thicker. This is precisely what gives ice cream a richer flavor. Only three manufacturers in the entire world have the ability to implement the technology of Deep Blue, and the producer Russian Freeze is one of them. If the ice cream has to be given fruit or berry flavoring and coloring, then before the freezing it is passed through an intermediate tank. Here the required ingredients are added into the mixture, and it is mixed thoroughly. From the freezer, the ice cream goes through a pipe into an apparatus that cuts it off into neat little bars and then places a stick into it. After this, the Eskimo bar is sent to the blast freezer, or as the professionals say, to the hardening. In this production line, you can see firsthand how important the process of the hardening of ice cream is. Here, the Eskimo bar has not yet completed hardening. Here, you see, only the stick is left in your hand. It's that soft. You can't even pick it up with your hands. But this ice cream has already hardened at 40 degrees Celsius. See, it chips like glass. Eugene, let's talk about the types of ice cream. There are a great many of them. We get ice cream that is dairy, and that's ice cream that consists of only milk fat with a fat content of up to 7.5%. Like the well-known one, yes, the renowned one. Ice cream made from cream is also ice cream. It consists only of milk fat, but with a fat content already from 8 to 11%. Plumbeer ice cream has a fat content from 12 to 24 percent and also uses only milk fat. And there is a separate group, this is ice cream made with vegetable fat, where the composition of the product consists of 50 percent milk fat and 50 percent vegetable fat. What does that mean when there's vegetable fat in here in the composition? Products using vegetable fat are probably a little less caloric and as now according to legislation, vegetable fat must be used as milk fat substitute. Then this is a product that is possibly more geared to some kind of a healthy eating. This by the way is very important. And how do you spot this kind of ice cream? Do you just need to read the label carefully? Yes, you need to carefully read the label because the manufacturers naturally will pass on all this information, and on those types of ice cream, it will be written, ice cream with vegetable fat. Ice cream with vegetable fat must have a content, uh, fat content of no more than 12 percent. Ice cream, an Eskimo bar, plum beer, creme brulee, sherbet, popsicles, a treat familiar to all and a favorite since childhood. The recipe for ice cream was thought up in China in the Middle Ages and was brought to Europe by the Venetian merchant Marco Polo. For a long time, ice cream was merely affordable to aristocrats. But this cool treat began to be produced in an, on an industrial scale and it quickly conquered the entire world. We are in the factory of the company Russian Freeze, where they make ice cream of superior quality. Generally speaking, it's a pleasant business to be involved in. Creating fresh new kinds really puts you, pulls you in. Moreover, in our company, we've always upheld Soviet traditions, which are embodied in new technologies and new production lines. In order to maintain them, as our ice cream does, is what differentiates it from the imported ones. Therefore, when we have tastings in chain store outlets and in stores, as a rule, our ice cream wins. Because at the time of a tasting, advertising and ingredients in general doesn't play any kind of a role. All perception is based precisely on the sense of taste of the food item, and therein is our strength. Ice cream consumption depends on the time of year. In summertime, small portions sell better, cones, cups and Eskimo bars. In winter, large packaging sells better, or so-called vats. People take them in order to enjoy this cold delight at home in the bosom of one's family. For this, the factory produces cakes like these here out of ice cream. Besides the division of summer and winter, there are also female and male ice creams. 
Men's ice cream is a really big portion with lots of nuts, chocolate is mandatory, and the more the better, so that it'll be delicious, sweet, and lots of it. Women's ice cream, in as much as our girls are all watching their figures, respectively, they pay attention to calories, so it's the lower fat types for them. At key stages of the production of ice cream, cold is required. Reduced temperatures for semi-finished and already finished products. In the factories of the company Russian Freeze, there are multi-stage or cascade system refrigeration units which use ammonia and liquid carbon dioxide as refrigerants. Units like these are more efficient than classical Freon, they consume less electric power, and the ice cream in them cools faster, better preserving its beneficial properties. The Cascade refrigeration system is safe for the environment because there is no Freon, no atmospheric emissions, and accordingly, the Earth's ozone layer does not suffer. From the compressor workshop, cooled carbon dioxide is sent out in three general directions. Most of it is required by the hardening tunnels at 50%, and the lowest is by the freezers at 20%, and about 30% goes to the warehouses. Ice cream on a tray goes into the hardening tunnel, which resembles a winding mountain road. Depending on its type, the ice cream will spend 45 minutes to an hour and a half in there. The principle of the hardening box is no different than that of an ordinary refrigerator. The refrigerant enters the evaporator and it transforms from a liquid into a gas, at which point it produces cold. And due to this powerful fan, the temperature in the tunnel is a uniform minus 40 degrees Celsius. Having come a long way, the Eskimo bar ends up here on this conveyor belt, but not all of these portions will make it into the final consumer. Only the straightest and most beautiful bars will, namely those that are covered with chocolate at the end. Having come a long way, the Eskimo bar ends up here on this conveyor belt. But not all of the, these portions will make it to the final consumer. Only the straightest and most beautiful bars will, namely those that are covered with chocolate at the end. The ice cream is dipped into Belgian chocolate, but it doesn't start melting. The reason is that the Eskimo bar is very cold. Its temperature is minus 20 to minus 25 degrees Celsius, and the chocolate is not very hot at only plus 45 degrees Celsius, and the ice cream is dipped into it for a mere half a second. So the Eskimo bar doesn't have time to even begin to melt. The Eskimo bar appeared at the beginning of the 20th century. One day in the US, in some confectionery shop, Christian Kent Nelson's little boy was hesitating for a long time deciding over whether to buy a piece of chocolate or ice cream, as the little boy didn't have enough money for both. Nelson decided to combine these two popular sweets and didn't end up backing a losing horse. He released the first commercial batch of 25,000 bars in 1920, and they immediately sold out. Nelson made a fortune. He sold licenses to produce his ice cream to other confectioners. As a result, the United States began to eat about a million Eskimo bars a day. One of the buyers of a license for Eskimo bars was a Frenchman, Charles Gervais. He sold the chocolate-covered ice cream on a stick in the movie theaters of Paris, where, at that time, the documentary film Nanook of the North was playing, which gives an account of the Eskimos. The theater-goers quickly named the new ice cream an Eskimo bar. How are new kinds of ice cream developed? Well, actually, it arrives in the form of some kind of a requisition to the production department with some kind of technical requirements from the marketing department. If you want plum beer ice cream, it should only be made with the use of milk fat. With strawberry flavor? In place of strawberry flavoring, you can also use a variety of fruit purees, such as strawberry puree or its natural flavorings. If to us these types of flavorings match, we test that sample in production. That is, it is a 
sort of an experimental batch with a minimum quantity, for example, a total of 100 kilograms. We provide it for tasting for marketing purposes and can then already come to a decision. Is there that kind of an ice cream, so-called classic, for which the technology of production has not changed for a very long time? Yes, without question there is. It's plum beer. Its technology and raw material base has already been stably in place for quite a long time. It seems to me that plum beer is just the most delicious ice cream. Well, yes, an awful lot of people love it. All of the ice cream production lines are automated to the utmost. The only demands of a human is to merely check the cones for cracks and set them onto a moving belt. According to legend, the waffle cone came about because of a blunder. American ice cream salesman Edward Humvee, who was getting ready to go to the U.S. World's Fair, which was being held in the city of St. Louis in 1904, forgot to bring paper cups along. And so as not to end up without any customers at all, he requested that the confectioner, Arnold Fornschau, bake him cups out of waffles. As a result, all of the ice cream was quickly sold out to attendees of the fair. Later, Edward Humvee opened his own company to manufacture ice cream in waffle cones. A spray device covers the inside of the giant waffle cone with a thin layer of chocolate, which protects the waffle from the moisture contained in the ice cream. The cone remains crisp and brittle. After the cone has been filled with ice cream, the proportioning unit makes rosettes on top that, a few seconds later, are decorated with a thin layer of chocolate. Then the cone goes on to the freezing room. A small sugar cone differs from a giant cone not only in its size. It arrives on the production line already wrapped in a paper cone, and then, like the giant cone, is coated inside with a protective layer of chocolate. And then the proportioning unit injects blueberry ice cream into it, and after that, vanilla. Blueberry jam is added on top, and it is closed with a lid. We all know what classic ice cream looks like in the waffle cup. Usually, the ice cream is poured in level with the base of the waffle. And here, uh, take a look on top, there's a full capping of 15% creamy treat. This ice cream is very easy to find in stores on freezer shelves. And this capping is a genuine trademark of Russian freeze. In Russia, waffle cups are the most popular type of ice cream. They account for about 45% of sales of the cooling treats. Therefore, the conveyor line to fill the cups runs more frequently than the rest. After winding up on the production line, the still empty cups are aligned on a platform so that the ice cream will be evenly divided between them. A proportioning unit that looks like a syringe injects a little berry filling simultaneously with the ice cream into the cup. In addition to the berry filling, the cup can be sprinkled with nuts, have chocolate poured in, or have caramel or condensed milk poured in. A waffle cup, as opposed to a cone, is flavorless without ice cream, but in combination with a sweet filling, it also seems sweet. Before it is sent to storage, and then further around to the stores, the ice cream once again ends up in the laboratory. How often do you take finished product off the line? Every two hours, a specific batch on the line is monitored for quality and packaging. Every batch, samples are selected from every batch, and they already go off to a tasting and respectively onto storage. The control samples are stored in a cold room until their expiration dates. We thoroughly research all of this and test the products for all indicators. The boxes filled of finished ice cream products are sent to the storage area by cargo carrier. In a 24-hour period, the manufacturer, Russian Freeze, produces about 100 tons or 1.5 million servings. This amount can feed all of the inhabitants of the city of Yekaterinburg along with its tourists. The trade house of Russian Freeze House, a subdivision of its group of companies, takes responsibility for the delivery of the ice cream. We have a fixed markup that we work on, so we don't charge any additional costs and we only transport our own products. 
In fact, we link up the chain, that is, the consumer receives, in fact, the product directly from the manufacturer. Due to this, the company can reduce expenditures in advertising and marketing and increase investments directed toward product quality, and consumers across the country have already shown their appreciation for that. Each year, the manufacturer Russian Freeze updates the product assortment, offering the customer a more diverse choice of ice cream. Thanks to the present-day technologies of production, almost every day more and more kinds of ice cream show up. But the main secret behind its success remains unchanged. It's the same as it was a hundred years ago. Simple, high-quality and healthy ingredients. Milk, sugar, butter and cocoa.